everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this and where you are. My name is Tanya Norris. This channel is Consciousness Rising Zimbabwe and Beyond. And welcome to another episode. And today, boy, we have quite a treat for you because we've got somebody uh, who's living here in Zimbabwe. Her name is Calabeda, and she is a healer, grid or earth worker. Uh, she does all sorts of shamanic practices from Ayurvedic philosophies to yoga, breath work. And we're also going to be talking about her retreats and, and Iboga, which is something that actually I only recently discovered. So welcome, Kala. Hi, Tanya. Thank you so much. That was quite a lovely entry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a lot of topics for us to, to, um, to cover. And yeah. so, so a lot of your work, Kala, it's about self inward journeying, self-exploration. So just give us a little bit of a synopsis about what that is and, and how you would work with somebody. Um, right, so, so what interests me um, particularly is how we store trauma in our bodies. You know, we, we come in as, as babies with nothing and we, we start to collect as our ego develops, we start to collect experiences and um, life happens. And these things, I believe, become stored in our body. And, you know, later on, as time goes by, um, can manifest as illness or broken bones or um, physical issues and emotional issues that um, are really trying to teach us something or, or, or messages to um asking us to to come back to ourselves to come in and to to explore why we've created this um um situation in our bodies and um yeah and what really interests me is taking people to a place um where they can they can open up to the wisdom of their bodies and um you know and their own an awareness of themselves and their environment and and become well yeah mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. shed those things you know, begin to um become free actually mm -hmm. these are binds you know so mm -hmm. that's what really interests me yeah mm. that's just that's very interesting because often you know when something happens like an accident yeah. we we do tend to think um oh shame for me it was not my fault you know, I was just walking down the street and minding my own business and boof, you know, this terrible thing happened. You know, and to explain to people that on some level, somehow, you have to take responsibility because somehow you did create that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite complex because it's, um, I think, you know, it, 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 we have to come to a, to a place of um, understanding that about ourselves, which is quite difficult actually to... Mm. Um, you know, when you first come in, if you if you're sort of beginning on your spiritual spiritual path, or these you know experiences of, like enlightening experiences started to happen, and you begin to walk this path of responsibility, it's it is quite a hard thing to swallow, you know. Um, however, once we have that acceptance um, that perhaps you know this accident, which appears to be an external event, is actually about some because we are connected to the universe we're connected to everything um this experience i have brought this experience to myself to open me up to a deeper understanding of myself it's all for my benefit and everything is happening for me not to me you know mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. i think it's commonly used that term but it, for me it really is true and i love it when that mm -hmm. light bulb comes on in people and they can yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Although you do always, I, I mean, I, I tend to say when things happen that seemingly are out of my control, and I'll say to myself, well, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> yeah. What am yeah. I doing wrong? It's like, it's all my yeah. fault. It's always my fault, you know, that these things have happened. Yeah. So we can get into a little bit of, um, how can I say, too much self-blame, too yeah. much beating ourselves up as well mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. we, we take on responsibility for everything now so yeah. um yeah it's a it's a fine line and a fine balance yeah so i mean carry on sorry i was just going to say it's very easy i think in those situations for us to take on a victim mm -hmm. mentality mm -hmm. you know 
is my mm. fault what have I done da, 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 da. Mm. and it's that is a really difficult um um place to to remove ourselves from because it is so subtle as well and and that's what our reality is showing us so it's a journey mm. this is all a, a journey a beautiful journey though yeah mm. and Kelly, tell us a little bit of how you came to to be doing the things that that you do um so i think as a child i was very um a very sensitive child and very in my imagination and I had imaginary friends and fairies and um uh yeah very um anyway an <laughs> absorbent child maybe mm. but, um and then as I as I grew up I just um I actually am a recovering addict so I got into some into drugs mm. and sort of went down this sort of quite dark path with myself but my first treatment center and I think I was 19 um was in America and I came across yoga there for the first time and also um uh, an, a beautiful amazing doctor Dr Brent Baum who um what he I was part of the group where um he showed us basically introduced me to how energy is stored in the body and how it could be removed through our minds and through our um um well through this a process and yeah that was that was my introduction into to energy and pain really mm -hmm. and those two things have never really left me um and as an and I look back now, and you know how you can join the dots on the way back, and that's sort of where it really started. But I opened up into this world of of energy and um, and yoga, and it's always been what I've fallen back on, and um, has been the one constant loyal, um, you know, beautiful thread in my life. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to learn more and find out more and. Um, through that process I became aware that I I can I can feel other people's pain in my bodies physically um, and not in a, a sort of scary kind of raw way but it's, mm. it's literally um, you know what, what happened to your left shin <laughs> I mm. can feel the pain in my leg like that so it's quite a quite a practical um, and it's the same with emotions now I've sort of been able to fine-tune it so that I know or have more of an understanding of of what the pain I'm feeling is about in the other person, um, so mm. it makes it easier for them to open up to that within themselves. Um, yeah, so it's it's really yeah, and just exploring what I was feeling in my body has enabled me to now be able to um, work with people with it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And. So, you know, there's, there's been a lot of chatter um, for years now about going through the shift. We actually did a, a very nice, Antonella did a very nice interview with Natalia Baker. So if people haven't watched that, they should go and watch that. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and it's all about that, doing the work, you know, uh, releasing emotions, releasing trapped emotions. And I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, we're going through the shift and we have to change with it. And we need to uh, make ourselves lighter. Mm. And we do that by debundling all of these issues and trap things. Okay. So, so my question to you would be, that is how you help people. And, and when, when we talk about doing the work, that is it. It is more going inwards, sorting out what doesn't belong there. How do we make ourselves just lighter? You know, it's the only mm. word really that I can think of. And yeah. so a lot of a lot of these things that, that that you do, and we'll talk about your retreats as well. That is a tool whereby all of us going through the shift, all of us wanting to raise our vibrations and our frequencies, this is how we do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I can just help you, you know, we meet in service to the light, both both, you know, you and me, and there we get there, and then we mm. just we just sh shift and shake and, you know, and density mm -hmm. can leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, then everything in the world shifts. It's yeah. amazing. 
And and you you have done and you're still working on new retreats because I know that you're partnering up with somebody or in a collaboration with somebody else. Tell us a little bit about those and 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 when we can expect to uh, have that or be able to attend one of those. Yeah, thank you. So um, the retreats, they're basically my intention with the retreats is to create unique experiential processes to wellness. That's the um, just something a little bit more interesting and well, not more interesting, but just bringing together um, concepts and philosophies that really all lead us to the same end. So um we have, uh, I run art, art retreats, sort of creative nourishment retreats in Inyanga um, and in Juliusdale, which is really all about um, connecting with the environment. There's yoga and breath work and walks and um, there is technical teaching as well um, in, in, in drawing and painting, in the oil painting process, but it's really about learning to observe. So, so that's where my strength in teaching comes, is really helping people to really see into the drawing they're making and really look, you know, really observe sort of um, mm. quite intensely the environment, which mm. I believe is a beautiful spiritual practice as well. Mm. Um, that's the art retreats. And then we have... Um, we have a boga retreats. We've got our second one coming up end of October, where we have a beautiful um, person who we bring out from England. Um, and her, she, you know, iboga is a medicine. It is, it's an African medicine, but it really addresses the mind. Um, it's, 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 it takes you, it takes you to, the darker places in our consciousness where we can begin to address the loops that we keep playing unconsciously throughout our lives that were basically you know they they were formed in our early years so boga it's a root and it takes you to the root of your issue mm -hmm. and this retreat is a very supported um beautiful um uh, professional uh, experience it's a once mm -hmm. in a lifetime thing really um mm. and it's for people who really want to do the work i mean you do come out a bit battered and bruised <laughs> but it is it's the, the when we talk about this density in the body this is something i think like, like most um plant medicines mm. you know it it's it's a very big um trauma release mm. so um yeah it's a it's a it's very good for addictions, um, destructive uh, behavioral patterns, part, uh, trauma, PTSD, um, or you know anyone wanting a a, a pretty deep psycho spiritual experience, um, you know, mm. within themselves and to get to know themselves and bring that awareness to their lives. Um, mm -hmm. It's a it's a very um, potent medicine for that so we do that mm -hmm. and then um i've got uh we're just formulating at the moment a retreat for december um with jp who's pretty well known in the yoga communities but he's you know his um uh what he's about is a lot what i'm about as well is taking people in 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 and um so mm -hmm. we're creating a pretty uh, an introspective retreat uh it's going to be probably at um in Inyango as well um and that's basically we're going to be blending um ayurvedic philosophy yoga um some some silent time with the shamanic um some breath work obviously also pranayama but shamanic breath work shamanic drum journeys um a lot of grounding energy as well so um and, and and energy work you know nice food really clean the body really clean the body and just hopefully mm. take people on a journey um to themselves where they've escaped from town life mm -hmm. and they have the space and time and also to create the space and time within themselves in that time <laughs> mm -hmm. where they can begin to just find out a bit more about themselves and breathe 
And yeah. how how long would that retreat be? Um, it'll probably be three nights we're looking okay. at as well. So all of them, all of our retreats are three three nights. Okay. Yeah. All right. And with the boga as well, we're offering there's there's we can do we're doing private ones as well. Mm. So that's also an option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just getting back to the aboga, it was it was explained to me as it just gets rid of all those negative things that hold you back. <laughs> The, me the mental yeah. things, the mental issues. So it's more of like yeah. a, a, yeah. a mental really? type of plant medicine, mm. and um, which I think is great. I mean, we spend our whole lifetimes in this, you know, going to therapies, you know, doing all of this sort of uh, self growth. Um, and if you can like, just do a session and whoop, it's gone, then fantastic, mm. you know. It's that, and that, that's what interests me about it more so than the other plant plant medicine journeys, they tend to intimidate me a little bit, to be honest. So, um, yeah, so that's very exciting, looking forward to that. And uh, just tell us a little bit about the history, um, as you explained it to me, uh, that it, where it comes from and what it was used for, because it, it, it's just new to me. You know, I've only yeah. recently in the past few months heard about this. Okay, so um, look, I don't know much. I'm not the facilitator, but yeah. what I do know is that there's a story, um, a beautiful story that it was actually in, um, it was used in, in ancient Egypt and it was um, abused by the pharaohs. So the priests took the medicine and they went and hid it in the jungle mm -hmm. um, in, in Africa. So now it only really grows in Gabon. It's quite, I, I believe it's quite difficult to propagate elsewhere. Um, but it's had such a huge impact globally um, as a as a an opiate inhibitor um, mm -hmm. that now they're beginning to make generics and they're isolating the 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 com main compound ibogaine. Um, but personally, I think that you know when you there's two sides to it when you extract. When you extract something from the plant i mean they they say that you're removing the soul of the plant you know so this, this is going to be an entirely different experience um which i think is what we like to, to do and you know kind of chemicalize and humanize everything mm. but but it is it is highly beneficial for for you know it's 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 amazing actually for addicts mm. it's, it's incredible so there's a lot of research going into it for that from that aspect mm -hmm. um what we do is a ceremony um and um but it's very sort of um the person that comes out she's very no nonsense it's not you know you don't have to be a spiritual person to come and do it you can read the research you can you can research it online and for its scientific benefits you know it, it changes mm -hmm. the neuroplasticity of your brain and allows you to rewire your brain essentially mm -hmm. and um you know we have people on the last retreat who were not in any way <clears throat> spiritual people um one chap in particular who was an alcoholic and he he hasn't drunk since mm -hmm. he um he's just it's just incredible how his life has turned around and you know he in the car on the way down there told me to shut up because i was like going on about you know it's a, and and he was like i actually don't care I, this is my last resort this is what i'm doing for this reason and i've read the science and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and it's worked from that perspective as well so mm -hmm. you know it it can be mm. for you know it's this it's open to everyone it's well and I, I think that's also important to mention is that it is uh, very much looked at in the scientific field yeah. yeah yeah it yeah. does its job very well um the integration is is long so yes you go in you have you you know you you do the journey um and you have this experience but then the the and we always say this the work comes afterwards mm -hmm. but for me in my experience of it the work has been you know it's put me on this path and it hasn't let me come off you know it's been very direct and very thing and i've had to face things that have terrified me but there's been this deep sense of trust from from whatever happened in that there in that room this deep sense of trust that i can just go i can just keep going i can just keep going that new way mm. and the world is just opening up slowly and it's been hard but and it's been a long time 
but I look back now and I can see I can see how with through my intention how the medicine has worked and yeah so it's six months to a year of integration mm. um you know so you do this one experience but then it, it continues you know mm. Mm. Um, yeah which is amazing as well yeah it is amazing and also from what I've heard is that you don't you really just need to do it once yeah yeah it's yeah. it's really a once in a lifetime thing. So the yeah. so your intention with it is very um is very important. And with this retreat, there is a process before whereby, you know, we we, we like to say a month before there's the the questionnaire is is um completed and you you know we ask everyone to to write the life story <laughs> and that goes to the facilitator and she then works with that and you to create a really solid intention i mean i mm. read of I've, I've read some interviews with people who are actually going for initiation in gabon and they've spent like a year with their therapist formulating mm. their intention you know it's a really mm. um really special gift actually from nature mm. you know it's, mm. it's, it's it's not a recreational thing at all no, you, you really got to apply that. yourself mm. it's a medicine okay. and it's um, yeah 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 yeah. So, Carla, now the other thing is, I think what we did fail to mention in the beginning is that you are an artist, actually quite a well-known artist here in, in Zimbabwe. Um, <laughs> but having now done the shift into, obviously, the more consciousness topics, um, yeah. you know, which you're loving and enjoying. And so just tell people, because you do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, you do offer, I know that you do yoga practice as well um so just tell us what help just tell people how they can you know what they can expect yeah thank you so um i do at shiv earth which is where i'm at now we do i do a i call it yoga union because i've brought together just what really helped me deal with my own overwhelm and anxiety which is yoga, um, breath work, and um, drum journeying. So I put together a class. I was thinking, how can I, oh, you know, people get up and go, but it covers all bases. You know, if you don't have time to do a two-hour mm. practice, mm -hmm. yeah. so I put together an, an hour-long um, session, which we do 8 to 9 a.m. in the mornings here, mm -hmm. and it's half an hour of yoga asana, so we're stretching and we're moving and we're opening up the channels, and then... Um, it's about 20 minutes of Wim Hof breath, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, the science behind that as well is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, reduces inflammation. It accesses your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, you know, you can stave off disease. It's incredible. The immune system, it's amazing. Uh -huh. Um, do 20 minutes of that. And then I bang my African drum and <laughs> while well, you're completely relaxed and gone, mm. um, and, it's just such a beautiful, you know, I tried it with people and people have been coming back and it's some people are now journeying in the drums. Some people cry. Some people just feel the vibration of the drum. By the time we get to that let point in the class, um, you know, so, so it's really encouraging people to be shifting stuff every day, working on themselves every day, but mm. not necessarily attaching to whatever they're shifting. It's mm. just through movement and sound and, um, you know mm -hmm. being together mm -hmm. you know moving through your stuff just mm -hmm. daily so there's that and then i um i do one on one energy sessions um which um is uh yeah we just we sit together um I, I start on the feet i work from the soul star up the body and then i move to the head and i work from sorry earth star chakra up the body and then i move to your head and i work from the soul star down and in those sessions um you know you come with an intention and invariably what what i see in your energy field opens up opens you up to to starting to work into the area you've chosen um and and it can be as as you know I, I will see some you know I, I'm I'm an artist I have really my mm. imagination is like oof, mm -hmm. and the colors and the, you know I'll see animals and I'll see beings and um so I let you know which healers are working on your body it's not me mm. sometimes it is working 
on your body, but invariably it's your energy system has called in the helpers and the guardians and they work on your body. And I just tell this beautiful tale. And so, and often people will feel, they'll feel things in their body um, or they'll see colors. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, have that they'll have their own experience with it mm. um so yeah after a few sessions um you know we're working into the layers and yeah it's been i love it i absolutely mm. love the one-on-one sessions <laughs> mm. well, I, i'm sure that the clients do as well you know i think yeah. that's uh that's lovely to do those kind of introspective you know relaxed you know not intense yeah. stuff you know you're just relaxed and then it all just sort of unfolds and percolates and pops up and and then it can be dealt with yeah it's fantastic yeah. i think it's also important just to mention here that you did say she of earth and yeah. for people who are not aware we do have this center now available it was created by uh, sarah clutie who has this most beautiful property and um, there are therapy rooms there. There's also a lovely, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it's like a gazebo type thing where a lot of workshops and yoga and ceremonies are done. But it's a beautiful, it's really given us here in Harare uh, a fabulous space for us to come together. You know, I've been there several times for all sorts of different events. And um, yeah, no, so I would just want to give a shout out there to, to She of Earth. And, um, and okay, so Carla, I'm going to put all of your details in, in the description below. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and let um, me just click this thing off. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. And, and good luck with all of those things. You know, we have the alternative news and awake and aware groups. So as soon as those retreats are, are up and running or scheduled, then we'll, we'll start putting out the, the information just to keep people in the loop because I think lots of people are going to be quite interested in that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful time. Yes, uh, so thank you so much again. And uh, to the rest of our, our viewers, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you soon with something else fascinating, I'm sure. Lots of love. Bye. Bye, Kenneth.